Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about kind of the topic that's come up with people saying, hey Jason, you flip-flopped on keto a couple times over the years. Can you explain yourself? Can you give a legitimate explanation? And yeah, I can, guys, and it does come down to me trying to follow the various scientific evidence. Uh, and what is it that I always tell you guys? That there are times when your mind is going to change based upon evidence, and you have to be open to these things. You have to. And you've got to look at what different experts are saying. You've got to compare it to your own personal anecdote. And this is the case of what I'm looking at here. And, and the thing I'm going to make is a point I'm going to make here is that if you're promoting a ketogenic diet, particularly uh, the, the wrong types, basically the ones where you're adding a bunch of butter and everything to every part of the population, that's not good. That's not good at all. Because there are absolutely different people because of where their ancestors come from who, in my experience, they don't do well on these sort of diets at all. And other people thrive upon them. Uh, and I happen to be one of the people who has historically thrived on this diet. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. And there are times when, when we have to be open to what people are saying. And it's something I noted. I kind of came out very against the keto uh, over a year ago. And people forget, I've run keto for like two years straight on YouTube. All right, what was it people said? That the leanest they've ever seen me, the best they've ever seen me was what? When I was in, uh, like the time period where I did that haunted house stuff. And the people were like, wow, you're starting to almost look aesthetic. Same thing. I went to pull, when I turned 40, I pulled 500 pounds for seven reps with no belt. Full resets, right? And everyone's like, man, you're looking leaner. And it's exactly. I was on keto during that whole time. The entire time. I was like two years. My blood work looked great. Everything looked great. Well, here I am now. I've gone back keto, and I'm gaining strength. My mood is good. My energy's good. My aggression's good. I'm not on TRT anymore. I'm not taking any exogenous testosterone. I'm 42. I haven't had any carb ups. I want people to understand that. I'm not cycling carbs. I'm not doing a cycling ketogenic diet right now. I haven't had carbs for like a month, like more than 30 grams in a day, right? And that's been the upper upper end. I've had days where I only have 10. I've had at least a couple days where I had zero because I just chose not to eat any veggies that day. And I wouldn't recommend you do that regularly, uh, but it's happened a couple times. So the point we come to here is that why? Why are some people thriving on it versus others? Well, I also pointed out that when we're looking at different studies and data that, that athletes usually do better on higher carb diets, but then you've had other experts saying, well, it's not necessarily true. Even, even Dr. Lane Norton, who is a huge proponent of eating high amounts of carbohydrates, particularly when cutting, has actually come out recently and said, yeah, the evidence is starting to suggest that no, ketogenic diets don't really impair performance for people who do them correctly. They don't seem to impair performance at all. And when we look at the studies, and that's the things I've pointed out, for the general population, there have been studies showing that higher carb diets cause better muscle retention. But here's the problem we come to with that. What are people's energy turnovers look like? Because I haven't seen that when dealing with strength athletes. I know plenty of strength athletes who don't lose any muscle on a keto diet when cutting. But what's the difference? Well, when you're eating 30%... Let's say you're eating 30% or 20% of your calories from protein when you're on 2,000 calories. Well, that's not very much. But what about those of us who lose weight on over 3,000 calories? Tell you, what about guys like me or a lot of other athletes? My maintenance is like 3,800 calories. So for me, weight loss would be, what, 3,200? Hell, even 3,500? So if I'm eating 70% fat, which I stay in ketosis... I stay in ketosis, so let's say 3,200 calories, right? Times 30% of that is protein. That's 960 calories from protein divided by four. That's 240 grams of protein versus people who are on 100 grams because that's all they can get away with to stay in ketosis. You see a difference there when you're strength training? And I'm doing cardio again now, and yet I'm still gaining strength instead of the leg muscle loss. What I saw on really high carbs when I was cutting before, I was losing body fat. I saw a lot of leg muscle loss when I did the cardio on higher carbs. Now I'm doing daily cardio again. I'm regaining leg muscle. My legs are getting bigger. I can see the difference in the mirror. I can see the difference in the way they feel. My leg strength is going back up. Squats and deadlifts are going back up. See the problem there? That's what I'm having to look at. I'm having to look at it and go, I had never had these problems on keto. 
Uh, and I think a lot of it comes down to people's ancestry and the way that we handle things. I'm one of those people who I didn't really see my LDL go up either. And that's our big concern is elevated LDL. Well, I've looked into this stuff. Like I've looked at guys like uh, Minnow who works with people who do keto. I've looked at what guys like, uh, what's his name, Louis uh, Belisaro. I'm, I'm going to get his name wrong. I apologize. The keto gains guy. Um, I've looked at people like Dr. Uh, oh, we call him the Doctor Who Lifts. He's on my friends list. Uh, <laughs> you guys know who I'm talking about. Nadolsky. He's actually said that he has clients who do keto, and one of the things he notices is that if, when he, if they have elevated LDL, he has them make certain changes, and their LDL comes back down. What are they? Stop putting butter on everything. Stop doing stuff like the Bulletproof Coffee. Stop adding coconut oil to everything, right? That's what experts have noticed, is that people who do all that silly shit, they add all these processed extra fats instead of just eating a high-fat diet from their normal foods, and their LDLs come back down. Because that is your big concern. Hey, look, if you're following this sort of diet and you have elevated LDL all the time, uh, keto people need to be aware that's dangerous. Because their other risk factors tend to be good. The HDL goes up, triglycerides go down. That's great. In the short term, that's great for heart attack risk. Like, we know that's indicative of it. But we're looking at things like atherosclerosis from the LDL. Well, that that's, is a big deal. And that needs to be addressed. But... That seems to have to do with, number one, what people are adding to their diet. Number two, uh, ancestry. And I'll give you guys a perfect example. And I'm not, this has nothing to do necessarily with, with your race or skin color, but we, we know that people from different parts of the world have, from different parts of the world have different ancestral diets. We process things differently. We have different, sometimes insulin responses, ghrelin, the digestive enzymes. There are differences in humans. We're pretty varied species. We're mostly the same. We're 99.9% .9 the same. We've got a little bit of variation, right? That's why we all look a little different, sound different, have different predispositions to medical issues, everything else. People are different a little bit. Okay, I've noted personally observing many athletes and people and even laymen over the years that people from certain regions, for example, like my ancestors, I'm Slavic, Eastern European. I have a lot, a very, very massive family, enough of a massive family that I've seen people go on keto diets, right? My dad is one of seven children. I have tons of cousins. One of the things I've noticed, all the members of my family and other Eastern European people I've known don't have any problems on keto. When I meet Polish people or Czech people or other people who do these, a lot of them have no trouble being athletes. They have no people being jacked, strong, losing body fat. Their blood work looks good on this diet. When I meet people who are of like a Scandinavian descent, you know, Swedish, Norwegian, things like that, who go on these sort of diets, they don't seem to have the negative blood work problems. In my experience, I'm not saying, I mean, that's just my anecdote. I've observed that. Does it have to do with these are regions of the world where historically people ate very large amounts of full fat dairy? large amounts of meat, people who maybe have on go. Again, this has been found with the Human Genome Project. Those are parts of the world where people have a large amount of Neanderthal DNA, right? See, all modern humans are not pure homo sapien either, are we? And those are parts of the world that have the largest percentage of Neanderthal DNA, which makes sense of where Neanderthal was. We didn't kill them out. We had bred them out. Uh, guess what, guys? We found that, that in different parts of the world, there were other human variations that we crossbred with that's that's we humans we have sex we we have sex with things that's <laughs> that's, that's what we do we're that's we reproduce uh deal with it so you take those parts of the world and we have higher amounts of say neanderthal dna is that a factor it could be i've heard that proposes a theory with some of this neanderthals were like a pure carnivore you're talking about the most carnivorous version of humanity that ever existed. They were carnivorous. I've noted that athletes who do keto diets from those, those regions, myself included, members of my own family who are athletes included, thrive on keto diets. We don't have any problems. Our, our blood work looks fine. We gain muscle, we gain strength perfectly. You take people from other groups, and I've seen other people who just absolutely flounder. And you know, I saw something that said a while back, I mean, a number of years ago, I had talked about the keto before and said there were studies that show something like 30% of the population thrives on a keto diet, right? 30%. And you know, the other 70% of the population and studies that they looked at, 
didn't. Well, you've got to say, okay, well, maybe maybe where some of their ancestors came from, like 30% of the world's population maybe comes from regions that have a longer history of eating very large amounts of saturated fat compared to other populations that eat larger amounts of carbohydrates. Well, it makes sense. It makes sense because when you go look at certain groups, I mean, I've noticed that in athletes also. Let's take, we see athletes from like uh, Nadogus, East Asia, where they do eat for thousands of years now tons and tons of white rice. Matt Oak is a perfect example. The guy was eating, a, what, 1,000 grams of carbohydrates a day? 1,000 grams of carbohydrates a day and almost no fat, and he felt phenomenal, got amazing results. Does it have anything to do with what some of his ancestors ate? It's possible, and I'm not saying this is all backed by science. I'm just saying this is hypothetical, and I'm going off my observations of that. Um, and that's what I'm saying. So I'm not even telling everyone out there, oh, everyone needs to go keto or do my orc mood. I know not necessarily, but what I would say is maybe look at, at things like that. And when you do these different diets, look at your blood work, go by your mood, because that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about what's working for you as an individual, what's working for you as an athlete. Your ancestry matters. Your genetics matter for your training and your diet. Is anyone in denial of this? We know this. We know this is the case. And in my case, I mean, I look at that and I look at what some of my ancestors ate and I look at how I respond and members of my family and other people I know respond in their blood work, my blood work, how I've responded to diets, what more emerging evidence is showing, even saying that, hey, these aren't as bad for athletes as we thought. If your energy turnover is high enough and you can consume more protein while still being in ketosis, you don't have these problems. They go away. They don't exist. We have to be open to that information. And in my personal experience, that works well. I perform just fine. I've never seen less than optimal performance in strength training, even on a ketogenic diet. And like I've said, you guys are watching my training day to day. Everything's coming along. People are noting I am getting leaner. Uh, I am regaining muscle. I'm gaining strength. I'm doing all, a lot of training, a lot of cardio. I haven't had a carb up. I have not been doing refeeds or anything else. I'm just straight high calorie keto, just pushing through. And I feel good. My sex drive is good. My energy is good. My mood is good. And I'm not even on my TRT anymore. Uh, that speaks volumes. This is working for me. And if it's working for me and it's not compromising my health, then I'm going to run with it. But by that same token, here's what I would tell you. If you're out there promoting, say, for example, that you're telling African-American males that they need to be on an ultra-high-fat ketogenic diet, you guys see a problem there? Well, they damn well better be getting their blood work looked at. They better be getting their blood work looked at because I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's dangerous advice. And that's what I would say to any of you who undertake any of these diets. You, you better understand the nuances of it you better understand how to do it and don't be doing silly shit like adding butter to your coffee i mean that's a perfect example this that is how people do ketogenic diets and they harm their health and that's we've got medical doctors who work with people on keto who are saying that at this point that look that that actually is stupid it hurts you it's harmful um that's that's not how you need to be doing this all right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.